Hi guys, so I have two scroller boxes to do yet again because I just left them on my shelf. I had other projects going on in my life and I'm actually really intrigued of what kind of artwork I can produce with these two boxes because I'm just going to admit something right now just so I'm not like fake or anything because I don't I don't want to be fake with this. I've already opened these. I know what's in them. For those who don't, I will go through it and I will show them, but I have been using a couple of the things here and there for other projects, other videos, and plus I follow the scroller challenge hashtag on Instagram, so it's pretty hard to miss it when people post about the boxes. So yeah, I know what's in them, so let's actually just go through what is in there. First let's go through the May one, I know this is the May one because I wrote it on the back, whereas the June one, as you can see, I wrote it on the front. So for the May scroller box, first of all I'm just going to show off the sticker, it's got like this really really funky design. Next we have the Milan Graphic H pencil, we also have a Milan 430 eraser, then we have two of the Pilot Pinter pens in a medium size, this one is gold and this one is green. Then we have the black in an F size, so it's a very kind of like small fine point but it's a medium fine point. We also have one in white and it says EF, so this one is actually extra fine. Lastly, we have the Molotow Liquid Chrome Pen. So it's like got this really metallic kind of tip. That's gonna be fun to play around with. This is the artwork and it is done by C. Michael. I probably pronounced that wrong, but there is his Instagram if you can see it, if it will focus. And the theme is Paper Tiger. I didn't mention this earlier, but lastly, we have this Canaletto Lissico, I've probably pronounced that wrong, uh, 125 GSM paper. And of that we have two sheets. I actually was way more excited about June's box and you can probably see why when I just open it. <laughs> if anybody knows me, you know that I am a sucker for watercolour. So I'm just going to show you the sticker and what it looks like. It's like a very watercolour-y effect. Very, very nice. Definitely going to be sticking that on my sketchbook. So the first thing, the big ticket item in here is the Dale Rowney travel set of Aquafine watercolours. Well, I actually saw Drawing with Waffles or Rin's video for it and I know for a fact that I mentioned this even when I opened it. This is a really small tiny brush. It is so cute. Oh, the Aquafine brushes are some of my favourite watercolour brushes that I own so to have one in mini form is just adorable and I love it. Now as I said in the intro I have already used these. I used these uh, when I was doing some sketchbook work. I just wanted a palette that I could just grab and go and this is just so tiny and sweet and it's just it's meant to be a travel palette so that's what I did with that. I'm just gonna leave it open like that. This little brush is a size 4 and I'm just gonna stick it there. Then we have the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils in earth green yellowish and Van Dyke brown. Now funnily enough the Polychromos pencils have actually appeared in a previous scroller box back in 2016. If I remember correctly, they appeared in the July 2016 box and I actually have a video of that and I'll leave a link to the playlist of my previous scroller box videos in the iCard in this corner. Scroller box was actually my first experience with Polychromos pencils and I could not recommend them highly enough. I now have a big set of my own and I really, really do enjoy them. So next we have the Stedler Norris Erasable Pencil. I think this colour is like a vermilion type of colour and I actually really like using the vermilion cola erase pencil so this will be very well appreciated. <laughs> then we have a Uni Posca pen. Now I don't know whether other people have noticed it but I've actually used this in one of my previous videos. This is the 0.7mm pin type nib. 
oh, I'm definitely going to have to get myself more of these because I used it on a previous video and I loved it. <laughs> Now before I show off the artist, I will say I did swatch these colours and that's what the colours look like down there. But this paper is really really nice quality paper, it is the Langton Prestige watercolour paper that's 300 GSM and I think if I'm going to combine everything together, this is probably the paper I'm going to be using. No shade to the other paper but this one's thicker and it feel, I feel like it will take to everything a lot nicer. Then in terms of the artist, this is what it looks like. So, so pretty. And Joanna Fee, or Fi, I've probably pronounced that wrong, but there is the artist. This artist uses watercolours one of the ways that I like to use them with pencil crayons, so I was very, very excited to open this box because at the time I think I'd already been spoiled on Instagram due to the scroller challenge hashtag. So when I got this box, I just had to open it as soon as possible. No filming, no nothing, just... And the theme for this box is Summer Flourish. Now just before I hop into the artwork, I just wanna say that I'm filming this before I have sketched anything out for these two boxes. I was originally gonna film this part afterwards, but I decided no, I'll film it before because that way I can have my thoughts change throughout the video. But just on a first impressions of both boxes together, it's very much a case of these two themes are very opposing. Maybe do two separate pieces of artwork, but kind of like cross over some of the supplies, but not all of them, because I know some of them just won't work with each other. And the themes especially, I just don't see mixing all that well together, but I could be wrong. Let's get into the artwork, or should I say artworks maybe? I don't know yet because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> So the artwork. Originally I was actually planning to do two separate pieces but I actually sort of came up with a compromise to use both sets of materials on one page and instead of mixing them together this time I thought having the materials contrast each other. Now in terms of the supplies they very much are night and day in terms of the way that they are supposed to convey a picture. May's box is very strong and graphic and in your face. It's supposed to grab your attention. Whereas June's box was more soft, it was more subtle, all the watercolor stuff, which you know I have a soft spot for. <laughs> for anyone who's been around on my channel since 2015, so early 2015, I actually previously did a graphic design course at college before I did illustration at university for three years. So I do actually have quite the graphic style and I think in terms of my own personal art style, the graphic nature of it still comes through in the line work that I tend to use a lot, as well as my use of colour. I very much like using bright, bold colours in my work. So when it came to both of these boxes, it was quite funny because I was very much middle of the road between both of these in terms of my own personal artistic style. Now, because these boxes contrasted so much, I thought that they would complement each other instead. So when it came to the artwork, instead of trying to mix all these art supplies together into one piece, I decided to still use them in one piece, but have two opposing sides, kind of like a yin and a yang sort of feel. In the last video where I used every single material together and just mixed them really, really nicely together, this time I just wanted them to complement each other and sit next to each other. Because in my previous video, I actually asked you guys whether I should mix the boxes up again or whether I should do separate videos for each box. And there were quite a few comments saying that they wanted a single box video and there was another quite a few comments that wanted me to mix the boxes so I thought why not do the best of both worlds. It's still mixing the boxes but 
technically it's still quite separate from each other. Now in terms of the characters, the two characters in this actually appear in my latest sketchbook tour which I think was my last video if I upload this video in the right order. And these two characters, they're named Taifi and Hisoki. Now Hisoki is actually an alias for Hayako. Hayako is actually a prince who goes undercover to meet his future bride, but she doesn't know that. It's an arranged marriage, so I thought that this would kind of be an interesting concept to play out with these two sets of art supplies. My character Typhi is known as a very soft, flowery, feminine character, so I thought that she would be perfect for the summer flourish, and she always wears a flower crown of roses, which is really, really sweet. I knew for a fact that she was going to be my character for the Summer Flourish straight away. But for the Paper Tiger, I really had trouble trying to decide who I would go with. So since I was already doing Typhi for the Summer Flourish, I kind of thought, well, what about Hayako or Hisoki in quotation marks? Because fun fact, when I was designing him and his like secret identity, I was very much watching Miraculous Ladybug and inspired by Chat Noir. I have always wanted a Chat or Chat Noir type of character and a very much kind of marry Chat sort of relationship. I know it doesn't exist in the show and it's so sad, but I'm like, if it doesn't exist in the show, it will exist in my OC universe. I can make anything happen in my own OC universe. And because of this character inspiration, I thought that Paper Tiger would actually match Hayako or Hisoki. So funnily enough, I actually own so much Dayla Rowney watercolor paper, but I've never actually used their watercolor paint before. And these watercolor paints, they were nice, it's just they were very, very staining and I don't know if part of it was due to the fact that I was working with a 100% cotton paper and also the heat because the UK has been unbearably hot when I was filming this and while I'm recording this audio. So it could be a couple of things that were playing against me, but yeah, these watercolours were really, really pretty and they had the kind of feel about them that literally make you want to pick them up and use them, which is great, especially for a travel palette. But as for the paper, I've never used 100% cotton watercolour paper before and that might shock some of you people, mainly because that stuff is expensive as all hell. <laughs> To people who have watched my last video, you might recall I said that I wanted to look through my watercolour collection for a travel palette. Now, will this be the ultimate travel palette? Um, I don't really know. To be honest, I think it's probably the closest, but I'm really curious about a Van Gogh set that is on Amazon for about seven pound. So, hmm, that might be a thing for a future video, who knows? The paint pens were a really nice change of pace, but definitely the best paint pen was obviously the Posca marker. I'd love to know your opinion of this artwork down below in the comments section. Do you think that it was a really nice compromise between two boxes or would you have preferred to see two separate pieces of artwork? Doing two pieces was actually the original plan, but then I came up with this composition and it just felt right. And for those who actually want a single box video next time around, it is going to happen because as soon as I've started editing this video, July's box came in. And so I filmed that pretty much straight away without sneaking a look this time. So hopefully that should be up sometime next month. I'm not entirely sure exactly when that video will be up, but hopefully in the next few weeks. I do have quite a few other videos to go out first. With that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Leave your feedback down below in the comments section. Do you like this piece of artwork? 
I'd love to know. But if you like this video, you can click that like and subscribe if you haven't already with those post notifications on for notifications for every single time I upload or live stream when YouTube wants to work, of course. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.